looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Welcome to Light on Living. I'm your host, Lisa Berry, and we're here to help find and give you reasons to feel better. And I couldn't imagine, you know, a better place to be than hearing from people who have really, you know, taken, well, what seems like extreme challenges and obstacles and found the opportunities in them. And I use those words carefully. I've chosen them because we are featuring two. We've, we featured them before. Now we get to dive deeper. But two co-authors of Obstacles Equal Opportunities, of Volume 2. And today we have Tracy Rickards here with us. And first of all, I want to welcome Tracy. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I love that this, this to me is, is an opportunity because uh, now we, we had spent the month going through and we had you guys on and now to have you back and go a little deeper. And with your, uh, top, we'll call it a topic, your chapter, your topic, oh, I think so many people are finding themselves in these prisons of their life that they're really looking for that freedom. And so I think that you, I just love that you're sharing this and get to go a little deeper because people, people need to hear this. <laughs> Yes, they do. Absolutely. And so what I'll do, I would love to start off by reading your, your little bio here, and then we'll just jump in. I've got some juicy questions that I know people need to, they need to have the answers and, and guidance from you, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm ready. All right. Well, Tracy Rickards, everyone. Uh, Tracy initially created the Kiss Your Boss Goodbye book, coaching and online training course to free herself from a corporate job that was killing her soul. I know so many people relate to that. Tracy's rediscovery of herself and becoming the master of her own world was fueled by a surprising sequence of events. Her quest for learning, fulfillment, and, and to have it all make sense was her catalyst to freedom and living her ultimate dream. As a speaker and educator, she provides powerful combinations of the business and personal skills you require to transform your life with confidence. Being an advocate for self-discovery, personal fulfillment, and standing apart from the crowd, Tracy boldly and candidly shares her years of education and experience. Becoming the master of your destiny does not have to take years. Ooh, that's one myth we're going to bust right now. Transformation and freedom are only one decision away. So we're going to let you know how to connect with Tracy, but of course, you know, on the Facebook and her you know, tracyrecords.com. But Tracy, I've got to start right there. That is such you, and that was such a bold thing. Transformation and freedom are only one decision away. One decision? Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Until you make a decision to make a change, it's never going to happen. A lot of us um, stay stuck in what we what we want to do, what we could do, and even more importantly, looking back at what we should have done, mm-hmm. beating our, ourselves up for um, where we're at, rather than making a decision just to make a change. Yeah, we're a sucker for punishment, eh? <laughs> and, and that's so funny because I think about your chapter being titled "I Was in Prison." I mean, we we're punishing ourselves, and we're and we're stuck. What makes us so? Well, what made you so, share us a little bit about your background and your story? And and how you did were able to get to the decision making period? Yeah, well, I'm I'm not known for making fast decisions, but I've been <laughs> able to change that too. <laughs> um, it started out uh, I, I was a, a mom at a very young age, and um, so you know as as time goes by, your family gets bigger and bigger, and so do your obligations and responsibilities. Mm-hmm. And so when you find yourself in a career with a lot of responsibilities or maybe you take on debt, um, often you, you keep yourself in a place where you may not be necessarily happy, but you feel you need to um, to fulfill your, your day-to-day obligations. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't always have to be one way. Mm. Okay. Now, I, it's funny. I love that you said that a lot of people think the, the one way is we need the paycheck. And, that, and that's a, yeah, that's a big stuck. So 
if that if everybody if somebody was stuck in that like one way thinking like but I need the paycheck like how do you how do you even break free of that prison of mindset it's kind of the truth <laughs> well and that's the thing we really do need the paycheck um money makes certainly North American world go around um but if we if we take a step back and look at okay what are our values what are our own values that make us happy and compare them to what are the values that we're living right now a lot of times we're living someone else's values, especially if we're in an employment situation, we're living the values of our employer, and we're actually making the dreams happen of the company we're working for, which is, you know, mm. wonderful for them, but then what about us? That's the very first step is comparing what are you living now to what it is that you want to, where, where do you want to be? Mm. That's, that was really big, actually, li- living the values of others versus asking ourselves the questions, well, where do I want to be? Mm. Yeah, I had to write this down. One of the other things you said was uh, can be postponing our happiness and fulfillment keeps us in bad jobs, tough situations, and toxic relationships. So you really, it goes in all, like, we, post, like talk about postponing. Is it because we really think, okay, I'll, I'll do it later. I'll live my life, my happy life later. Well, part of it is that we're really sold that as a dream. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're sold that we can be happy later in retirement. If we just work hard right now, save up all our eggs, and then we'll be happy later mm-hmm. instead of enjoying what we can now. In fact, we're sacrificing more and more of our living hours mm-hmm. to postpone it for later. You know, uh, people are working longer and longer hours. Mm-hmm. And for for what? When we find, uh, I think the stat is like 85% or more are unhappy with their day-to-day life and their jobs. It, it doesn't really Huge. make sense when you think about it. <laughs> yes. And there's so many, and I, I love, there's a checklist you kind of have in your chapter. And some of them are, and this is one of my biggest things was, um, I just it just so hit me, was are you missing the sunny days? And, oh, my gosh, like when you just said living hours, I mean, that was one of my biggest things. Even the other day, it was such a beautiful day, but I had to run into a big department store, and I thought, I don't even want to go in here right now. And I was getting antsy being in it because I thought, I thought, I think I just missed out on 20 minutes of the sunshine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but there's yeah, that, especially in Canada when we've got, yes. uh, we live in Calgary and our, our summers are super short. Oh, yes. And those are precious opportunities to enjoy being in the, like the sun feels just so good to be in the now, but how do we get to the point where we think we're worth, like I, I deserve to be in the sun. I, I'm worth, you know, my life has worth and meaning. How do we get from, to, I have obligations to, hmm, I'm worth it. There's definitely a process, <laughs> but the first thing is, is making that decision. Because a lot of times we wait until we feel we feel like we are worth it or we feel like doing it or we mm. feel like something. But, you know, the feeling often comes after the decision and the action. Oh. It, is the, it is the be, do, have. Yeah. So I spent a lot of my years in that very same cycle of, you know, I'm going to work harder. I'm going to be the best employee I can. I'm going to have all this stuff. And once I have it, then I'm going to be happy. Mm-hmm. And it just was not working for me. It was working the opposite, in fact. The harder I worked, the, the further away I was getting from my own values and happiness. Mm-hmm. Which is not to say it's not a, you know, you've got to be a, a good employee, for sure. You've got to be a good citizen. But we need to start with looking what, at what our particular gifts are mm-hmm. and our values, what makes us happy. And when we focus in on what our gifts are, a lot of times we can bring to the world something new and then the money follows that. Mm, Because you're feeling, feeling better. You're not feeling so imprisoned. Um, That's right. You're coming from your heart. Right. And so so one place that's very difficult I find for people to come from the heart is say they have a, they're at a corporate job or an industry job, does, you know, whatever job, and, and they don't like it. So you experience this part. This is what I'm going to ask you is that you go there, you already don't feel good, and then you've got to deal with gossip. I want to touch on this because gossip is like almost like gossip is like something that happens that kicks you when you're already down. You're like, oh, come on. Right? So, can you talk a little bit about what your experience was about gossip in your industry and how that affected you and then to, to help people, how do they rise above that? 
That's a fantastic question. Absolutely. So my particular industry was industrial out here in Western Canada. So it was, it was a highly male influential world. And even as a female in the world, I had to bring a lot of male energy. And so it, the male world that I was in was a lot to do with power. And um, so, which is different than female energy when it comes to gossip. Mm-hmm. So mm. for the, the male um, gossip arena, it is about power. And if, if a person doesn't have a sense of personal power, then they will use gossip manipulation to make sure that the other person doesn't have power. Oh. And that was a that was a really big thing uh, when it came to um, blame, laying blame for what the problems of the organization were, uh, you know, misplaced, uh, well, misplaced responsibility, really. Mm-hmm. And that the gossip was used as a weapon there, um, mm-hmm. not to make, uh, you know, not to make someone else, you know, myself feel powerful, but then to bring someone else down and then, I guess by, uh, um, you know, if you can put someone else down, that must make me feel better about myself. Yeah. And it is brutal because it's a no-win situation for either one. Yeah. No win. Um, you know, and, and and I guess it's a little bit stereotypical, but um, from a female side, it is, it's similar, but it's, it's not quite so much about the power so much as uh, the self-esteem mm. of how I feel about myself, my 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 beauty, my skill set, my attractiveness, mm. um, and even though gossip was still used as a weapon, it had the same result. It's a no-win situation for the parties involved. Yeah, I I'm blown away right now. I've never considered there being two kinds of gossip and and where you know, the masculine and feminine kind of, um, that is just so uniquely different. I really never thought, but you're right. Where, where is it that we go or that we are affected by more so um, that can take us down? I mean, hey, if we're getting picked on for self-esteem and, you know, attractiveness or value that way, and then we're also losing power and being manipulated and blaming, oh, so that is a prison. That is a complete prison. That It absolutely is, and it, it becomes a vortex of a, down, a downward spiraling vortex mm. because if a, a person who partakes in gossip you know if a person will gossip to you they will they will likely gossip about you yeah so even just partaking you're actually inviting that into your world mm, that's so you know that that's very interesting we, uh, my next question was going to be because you know how do you find someone to trust and I think that kind of you highlighted it you go, you want to make sure if you do need to go to someone to talk to them or confide in them or ask for something if they're displaying behaviors even about someone else even if you might think oh yeah they're my teammate they're just you know they're supporting me but they're talking to somebody else they're probably not then well I, I don't know whether they are or they aren't I, I'm just looking at what the patterns are mm-hmm. patterns and cycles repeat themselves and so unless we dive into what our own patterns and cycles are and change those, then they're going to perpetuate themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's why this personal development world is so exciting for me because Ooh. then I've got the opportunity every day to see how I can make my world better. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I have partaken of gossip. Absolutely. I think everybody has at a, you know, to a certain extent. But at, at what point does that not serve you? what point do you need to look at it and say, you know, if I want something better, what is it that I have to change? Ooh, I like that question. If I want something better, what is it I have to change? Ooh, that's a good one. All right. Okay, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, it, and you mentioned there's a few things. Somebody could be their prison right now and what they need to change is that they're overweight or they're not physically in shape the way that they they would like, or you mentioned about being addicted to things, cigarettes, food, um, like just everything. They could be addicted to consumption of things. Mm-hmm. I, this one really, this is a big one. You talk about one of the prisons being compromising myself for attention and love. Yeah, that's. Can you just touch on that one? That's a big one. Well, um, my self-esteem was not so great when I was young, uh, and what I found out was I could get a lot of attention by being a great student. And I would get the accolades and the certificates and, um, you know, so, so I thought, well, that feels good. 
So I'm just going to do more of that. Um, but then what happened was it led into a sort of a perfectionism type mm-hmm. of thing where everything had to be better and everything had to be better. And at what point can it not be any better? At what point are, at what point are you fulfilled with what you have? And so for me, it was one of those little black holes that I had mislabeled as love and attention. And it wasn't the real love and attention that I needed. The real love and attention that I needed was from inside myself, Mm. accepting myself, loving myself as I love other people, Mm. um, and rather than it coming from an external source. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yes, and also oh, that's so that follows a great other question for you is like where in our lives are, have we mislabeled? I, that is such a cool thing. Like our perception needs to shift if something isn't making us feel good. If if we're not feeling fulfilled, I mean, you could have looked at your life in one way and just focus and, and on the external. Oh, I got this award and this accolade, and this person thinks I'm really smart here, so check mark. But then at the end of the day, you sat back and went, oh, I'm still not happy. I I don't. I don't have this fulfilling feeling. Absolutely. And uh, since you mentioned um, addictions, yeah, it, a lot of addictions come from trying to fulfill that empty spot inside. Mm. Yeah. You know, we reach for the cupcake or you reach for the cigarettes or the too many glasses of wine mm-hmm. or whatever it is that's going to temporarily make you feel better about yourself. Mm-hmm. But... When, when a person can find true love for themselves, a true acceptance, and nurture their own child inside, that's when uh, addictions and that can turn around. Mm-hmm. I love that you said the word reach, because I remember learning maybe about a year ago, it helped me with my perception of things, that anyone with any kind of an addiction, it's because they are reaching for a better feeling, and they just, they're just trying to find it the way having an addiction actually can we can actually highlight it and say hey you know what i'm not a bad person for having this addiction i'm what i'm what i'm trying to do is reach for something better which shows that i do have some self love in there i care I, i'm just i'm i'm still looking for the right thing and i don't want to get like sometimes we can get stuck like an addiction let's say it's not serving you healthy let's say you got stuck in um i don't know if you ever did have a smoking addiction or something like that um is that again is that based on our decision just to make a decision to stop that addiction or change or shift it? Initially, there's got to be more to it for sure. Mm. The, the feelings, I've, I've always found the feelings come after the action. And so making the decision, this feels bad, this feels horrible, yeah. I'm angry, I'm hurt. Um, if we look at the feeling, then what we're going to do is we're, we're just going to say, well, you just need to know anger management. You just need to manage that. But we, what we don't, we don't necessarily need to manage it in that way so much as look at what's the sign telling me? What's inside about, like, where's that anger coming from? It's not good enough just to, you know, lock people up in jail because they're angry. We need to dig deep inside and find out where is that coming from and be able to fix that piece. And a lot of times it comes right back to the self-love and that, ooh, that empty hole inside. Yes, and you actually went full circle. I love this because when you listen to those emotions and it says so that this feels bad, I am resentful, or I'm angry, that's actually, a, that's the question we can come back to in the beginning and say, am I living my values or am I living the values of others? And that's usually when we don't feel good because we've been living the values of others. Mm-hmm. And in our modern society here, what limits us is, uh, you know, we need money for everything. Yeah. So, yeah, so a lot of people are living in survival mode. We're we're just trying to get through the survival, put food on the plate mm-hmm. before we can get to think about that self-actualization part. Yeah. If there was a way that we could get the message to people to, that you can do both. You can mm-hmm. pay attention to your values. You can pay attention to what makes you happy and still put food on the table. And you'll be yeah. a lot happier world. I love that. Actually, it's funny. Um, I started, I I don't know why I did this, but I was thinking back in my day and I was trying to do my values and listen and everything because what was happening, and I had to laugh at myself for missing this up first, was let's say I, I, 
knew that I was going to buy groceries and they were $100. So I was like, I need $100. But then what was happening was people kept giving me all this food. And, but then I still was stuck on the idea that I needed $100 for food. And later on, I went, oh, my God, I don't even need money. I actually got the food without even having to. I, could, I skipped the money step. Like, people are bringing me. <laughs> I, I think everybody felt that I needed to eat or something. I don't know. I meant. And I thought, oh, my gosh, what would the world be is if we didn't actually need the money. We just needed that thing like that we needed, right? And then people shared that and bartered or saved or gave and all these things. So I thought that is a weird paradigm shift to like, look, there's other ways. There's another way that you can maybe you don't imagine, right? And so my yeah. my question is, because you have this program. I love it. I wanted to talk about it. It is called Kiss Your Boss Goodbye, which is funny. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I want to ask about that program, but also the the obstacles equal opportunity, the volume two, the chapter that you've written. I wanted to ask how it, it's been out for two months now, or no, yeah, since long. May. Yeah, two, yeah, and so oh, since May, right? How has that been for you and with your with your kiss your boss goodbye program? Have they worked hand in hand? It's been beautiful. Oh. Um, I, it's getting a lot of attention. Um, however, I'm, I'm, I'm more using the, the brand name of Sassy Success. Ooh. What I was finding, my feedback, was that at called Kiss Your Boss Goodbye, a lot of people did not want to engage with the social media in fear of that their boss might, might see it. Might see oh, it. gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the exact same learnings, exact same teachings, um, we're calling it Sassy Success. So who couldn't use a little bit of that? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> and what does it mean for you to be sassy? Sassy for me. So so when I was in the boardrooms, um, I had a different me. I had mm-hmm. um, blazers and I wore mostly black and it was pretty plain Jane. Right now I've got these beautiful purple fingernails and purple <laughs> hair and I am like living in vivid color. And so I love that the world is bringing that now that we can be in color. I love that. And so SAS to me is being more of you, being more of who you are, bringing it out in living color. Mm, Shiny. I love that. That's so true. I love you said vivid colors. Like our values have, they're vivid. They're, they're bright. And our values really mean a lot to us. So you're able to express now the way you do because I'm sure you probably still go into a, a boardroom now and then right oh yeah absolutely <laughs> and you're and we're able to do so do you do you have a boss anymore or are you are you the boss well when you are self-employed every one of your clients is the boss so now I have more bosses probably <laughs> than, any, than I did before um but now I, I can I can serve my way I can bring me to the table. And, and there's an, another uh, word, professionalism. You know, what is professionalism? Mm, is it yeah. that stiff, staunchy, you know, blazery person that I was? Or am I any less professional with purple hair, laughing, having oh. fun, bringing the same content, the same skill set, and uh, bringing me? And that's mm. the thing, that's my, my burden right now is, you know, in, in Canada, there's a lot of job loss. We're seeing, still seeing mass layoffs. And my, my burden for people is um, once they like, get the skills that you need to survive before you need them, right? Hmm, if, you're learning, yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're learning survival skills or first aid skills, you're learning those skills well before you need them. Hopefully you don't need them. Right. But in, in this era right now, why not learn business skills, personal development skills, Takeaways while you still have your job before you before you need them. Yes. And that's what I bring to people is, you know, a new a new way, new tools in their toolbox. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you do it in a fun way because, you know, um, I love that you're talking about preparedness. I, like I was, I love the uh, equi- formula that says success is you is can, it can be said that success is equal to um, op- when opportunity meets preparation. And uh, I love that you said, yes, if we're doing CPR and stuff, we hopefully are learning it on a regular basis and remembering it so that when it does happen, we're prepared. And, not, and not that we're gearing up for it to happen. We're just and being hope prepared. it doesn't happen. <laughs> right, right. But, but you sure can, you're not going to fear it should it happen, a job change or a relationship, not, you know, not be 
no longer serving you, that you need to exit. Um, and so I love that you, so wait, now how could people um, get a hold of you and do they just work with you one-on-one? Do you have a, a mastermind or a program? I have a, a few online programs, large and small, like entry level. Um, I have even the free Facebook group and Facebook page where there's uh, tons of stuff that can help you at no cost. And that is called Tracy Rickards and Sassy Success. Facebook. LinkedIn, Twitter, I'm everywhere. You're everywhere. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) And everybody can start by reading your chapter. It's so interesting with these books, um, like anthologies and compilations that really, like you guys really open up your lives and hearts so that we can see some vulnerable moments and experiences that you've been through and how you came out the other side. We want to show that we're real people and we're we're nothing special. We are people just like you. And Mm -hmm. it's just one decision away. I love that. And with that one decision away, everybody, make the decision to pick up the book, Opportunity Equal op- oh, wait, let's try again. <laughs> Obstacles Equal Opportunities. That would be better. Volume two. And right now we've just been enjoying Tracy Rickards with an S. And please connect with her on Facebook. And then also stay tuned because we're going to be coming back with yet another beautiful co-author on helping us get through these things. So thank you so much, Tracy, for being here with me. Beautiful. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Okay, bye, Uh, Tracy and everybody. Come back in two minutes. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. For those times when you're looking for insight and additional tools to living your most elevated life, there's no better place to turn than Intuitive Alchemy Radio. Join me, Laura Brown, each Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations, live on-the-air readings, and tools to help you build your most aligned, most abundant, and most delicious life. It's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance. Say hi, guys. When I adopted them, I discovered that they both have incredible personalities. Chance's sole purpose in life is to love and to be loved. Frankie is a little bit of a scoundrel and always entertaining. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund. everyone you're listening to light on living i'm your host lisa berry and we just enjoyed the first half hour with uh tracy rickards and both of our our guest authors today are from obstacles equal opportunities of volume two and it was just a blast last month going through and really enjoying the conversations with all these authors but i'm so happy to bring them back because we get to go deeper and these these topics that these two co-authors are, are talking about, I think can help everyone. And we've 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 got with us, I can keep saying this right here, <laughs> uh, is Leslie Tremblay. And I want to say welcome Leslie to the show again. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be back. Ah, yay! <laughs> You know, your story, just like everybody else's, is so interesting. I have, a, I have my own kind of vision of something that I would love to, I feel like you're an expert on that I would love to speak with you about. But what, yours is a funny one because uh, it's about living, like we hear it all the time, living your dream, how to live the dream, um, not giving up on your dream. And, and that's something that you really, in your chapter, share that you did have dreams. You thought you were living in dreams. And then it kind of just went, whoa, gone, poof, you woke up. And now you have to have a different dream. So. I want to touch on that, but I'm going to read your um, your bio here first, and then can we just talk about dreams and how to keep dreaming them even when they don't think they turn out the way they do? 
for sure. <laughs> okay, great. Well, everybody, this is Leslie Trombley, and Leslie's ambition and education have been her pathway to achieving a rewarding career as a professional administrator. She is a lifelong learner with an ongoing desire to investigate the more intrinsic qualities in life and what makes us who we become. She continuously steps outside of her comfort zone, both personally and professionally, knowing that there is only that is that is the only way one grows. Her passions include travel, family, community service, and inspiring others to become better versions of themselves through guidance in personal and professional advancement development. Her greatest accomplishment was at the age of 42 when she gave birth to her son, Dominic. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Leslie, never, yay. Leslie never gave up trying to be a mom. That's a dream and, and, a, and a living truth now. Along with her husband, she teaches her son how to become the best person he can be. And Leslie's life is about balance and not giving up on her dreams. That is so cool. See, you said your greatest accomplishment was having, you know, your, a baby, like a family. So when you dreamt that dream and, it, and it's not coming true, not coming true, how do you, how does one keep, keep dreaming it, keep hanging on to it? You know, it's not easy. Um, you know, with, um, with, with my marriage, um, the first one, I'll just put, put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> with, the first, with, with, with the first one, um, you know, it's something that we had wanted. We had actually wanted children and it just didn't actually work out for us. Our, our pursuit for children just uh, wasn't happening. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when we, when we got divorced, um, you know, he, he met somebody else and, and, uh, fell in love and got married and she became pregnant. So of course I'm thinking to myself, oh, wow, a broken, it's my fault, mm-hmm. yeah. um, that we actually couldn't, couldn't, couldn't have children. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then again, I thought, <laughs> I know you're going to feel something with this too, but I thought that I was going to be the cat baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Definitely mom, mom to something for sure. And then I, um, you know, through a series of obstacles and challenges, I ended up meeting uh, my, my current husband. And, um, you know, we had just had the right combination. And, and sure enough, um, Dominic came along and at the age of 42, uh, became a mom for the first time. Mm. And you didn't have any fear. Uh, like, this is just like, oh, my gosh, this is my blessing. I'm getting to do this. Like, there's, did, did that erase all potential fears? Yeah, it, it most certainly did. Um, you know, he, he's my blessing. He's my little miracle, um, mm-hmm. which makes me grateful for everything else that I have in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, be, be, being a mom has taught me so many things. Uh, <laughs> it's been it's been a challenging. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes it, it certainly is challenging as well. But uh, definitely the biggest blessing um, and the biggest. Uh, gratitude that I have in my life is, 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 is for my family, right? Yes, I, I love that we're yeah. talking gratitude. I know I want to come back to gratitude, yeah. but for a moment, you said something so interesting. I think a lot of people get stuck in the place of blame and I'm broken. And I want to sit there for a second because uh, when we have a dream, but yet we are thinking, gosh, what did, what did I do wrong? Why wasn't I good enough for, you know, if a marriage dissolves? Um, or I can't get pregnant, or I I got fired, or I'm just not happy. I never get I never get that opportunity. That's a lot of blame and a lot of brokenness, and it really creates a lot of momentum. How does one uh, stop that cycle of even blaming themselves for be, for thinking they're broken? It's really a mindset change. Um, mm-hmm. I knew that I had to change something if I wanted something different. Um, if I wanted to stay exactly where I was, I could continue to thinking the way that I was, but I didn't. And so I did have to change that. Um, you know, how you think, keeping more of a positive attitude, being more grateful, um, thinking those things and being in that energy and that vibration will actually attract those good things, those positive things into your life and if you want to change your situation then you have to change yourself first uh, in order to attract the new things that you're wanting in your life Mm, I like that you have to change yourself first before you can change Mm -hmm. the situation like don't wait for the situation to change no 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 you you definitely have to change yourself it's like somebody wanting a new start in fresh city but doesn't change themselves and they end up just had getting the same thing they had in the last place that they were actually at. recreating it yeah recreating it yeah well in your world which is interesting you had been in a marriage for you know 14 years give or take and mm-hmm. your whole world changed but now let's talk about in that situation where you're suddenly single and that's scary 
<laughs> how do, did you sit down and have a little conversation with yourself and say, all right, we're getting out there and we're confident? Or did you go, oh, my God, I'm being thrown into the wolves? <laughs> oh, at first it was like, oh, I don't know how to do this. I mean, um, I ended up um, kind of, I guess, living more of his life than my own. Uh, my life became his life. Our, you know, his friends became our friends. Um, and so it was really the matter of me trying to figure out who Leslie is and what is she like? What are the things that she actually wants to do? So I just started by, um, you know, hang, going out with um, some of my uh, some of my single friends and trying to figure out how to how to how to do this life or the single life and learn how to date. Um, I got to a point and said, hey, you know what? I'm not going to meet anybody sitting here by myself. And I and I said, uh, no judgment at all. I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes to whomever asks. You know, that was not a good idea. <laughs> that was not a good play. I'll write well, then you that was, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was not a good idea. Yeah, yeah. But well, I love it that discover you, you enjoy your own company. <laughs> yes. I, I love that you're, you're, um, I've kind of used, I love the bitmoji I found for yours as well. But I love using little cartoons and I, it's, um, you just check it out on Facebook guys. It's so perfect. It's when saying no is like the best thing ever. We have to start saying no and not yes to everything. And if, yeah, I, I know you saw the little cute bitmoji there. I thought it was yeah. perfect, but, <laughs> um, the, then I will have, okay. So I have a personal question. You're going to, you might have to reach into your memory bank for this one, but you know, was there something about you who you believed yourself to be in your first marriage that when you finally got out there and you went, I don't even like this or, Oh my gosh, I like this. And I never thought I did because you were living the you guys life. Yeah. That's really that. Um, I just forgot about me and forgot that I actually mattered. I think. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just kind of got comfortable doing what somebody else wanted to do instead of um, figuring out what it, what I wanted to do, um, mm. you know, the, the types of things that I, that I like to do on the weekends, the types of things that I read, that I watch, you know, I just uh, lost myself is really, yeah, it's really what happened. Yeah. What and makes I us dig give myself us, out of that. <laughs> what makes us give ourselves up? What makes us get lost and forget who we are in, um, in, in a relationship or job or anything? Yeah. I think it's just a matter of trying to please other people and, not exerting our own our own self to say, hey, this is actually this this is what I want out of life, and learning how to ask for what you want can be difficult. It usually okay. is difficult at first. Uh, it just takes practice. It starts small and work up, work your way up to put things bigger. I like that. Yes, start small. Get get into practice of asking for what you want, guys. And I think that's a big one because the fear that's really coming up is, like you said, people pleasing. So the fear there is they won't like me, you know, um, yeah. or I'm uncomfortable and I'll fail and I can't do it. Or you just kind of you kind of forget. Um, I want to talk about that saying no thing. What are some things that we end up saying yes to quite often that we really should be saying no to? <laughs> Some things that we say yes to, um, I'm not, let's see, um, put you on the spot. Yeah, put, put me on the spot. <laughs> I think, I think we say, I think we say yes again, just to please, to please other people. And we say yes too quickly instead of thinking about what we actually are, are saying yes to. Um, mm. and really when you say yes to something, you should be wholeheartedly on board with whatever you're, you're being asked to do and it should be a holy hell yes right yes. <laughs> yeah this is something that I want and not just saying yes just to pass your time uh because then it could be essentially wasting your time right oh I love you oh my gosh guys I love it I actually had to draw the heart because I love it you said if you're going to say yes make sure it's a wholehearted yes and we can only yes. give a wholehearted yes when we love ourselves know ourselves this is so cool <laughs> <laughs> um, a judgment so this is the fun part so when we're looking at things I like I really feel like you're going to be able to help people just to kind of go okay I'm I'm you have to have discernment we have to judge you know to a point to say this is good for me this isn't good for me how do you, how did you know something was going to be um fulfilling to you what were, what were those little tips that show up in your life that you know you're when you know you're on track it, it makes my heart feel good. Um, you know, sometimes when we're saying, you know, yes to the, to the wrong things, it just feels 
bad. It just feels bad in our, in our, in our gut. And it's something that we do need to listen to a lot more. Um, but when, you know, when you can say something, when you can say yes to something that just makes your heart feel good, um, it brings a light to you. It brings a smile to you. Then you know that you're, you know, more aligned with, with what that actually is. If it, if it feels bad, if it's being forced, then it's something that you'll probably not end up working out well for you. Yes. Oh, I like that. So it's back to really being present and living in that now of how do I feel at this moment when I'm saying yes or saying no, you know, so I'm going to talk about guilt then for a second. No, sometimes mm-hmm. I've, I've had to say no to things and I know it's the right thing to say no. Like I absolutely have to say no, it's not for me. However, ugh, I feel kind of bad. Like, oh, why can't I just do this for this other person? What, what do we deal with, do with in that situation if we're we're a guilt person. We just don't want to feel bad about making somebody else feel bad. Um, you, what somebody else thinks of you or their feelings are none of your business, really. Mm. I mean, we <laughs> we can't. We're not responsible for how somebody else feels. We're only responsible for how we feel and how we react to something. If something is no, if somebody asks us a question, the answer could be yes or no, and they have to accept whatever the answer is that you give them. Uh, but again, we're not responsible for how somebody else feels. Just just how we feel and how we react to the situation. Right. And, you know, I bet moms have to go through this a lot because little right. kids ask for a lot of things that we have to say no to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's why it breaks you a little hard, too. Yeah, yeah. Because you're like, I yeah. want you to have that candy, but it is not good for you. So it's a no. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You have to eat first. <laughs> yes, <laughs> negotiations are important. And yes. um, courage, courage to ask for what you want is a necessity. That's one of your things. I love that. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. So courage feels like a lot of like, okay, first of all, can you define, define courage for us? <laughs> for, for, for me, you know, courage yeah. is really just is, is, is stepping out there and um, being true to yourself and, again, asking for what, you want uh, mm-hmm. and it will feel uncomfortable I guarantee you uh, <laughs> if you're not used to doing it it will feel uncomfortable but just ask anyway what's what's the worst thing that could happen right maybe the worst yeah. thing that could happen is is no from someone and that's okay yeah and and you know that that really is okay um, you know that 30 seconds of courage just ask for what you want within that 30 seconds of courage and then at least you know it's, it's out there you've asked for what you want start off small and then, and then make them bigger questions. And sometimes you have to have the courage to ask yourself what you're actually looking for as well. Not just mm. somebody else, but really, what do, what do I want? What do I need? Um, and that takes sitting with yourself, uh, yeah. not relying on somebody else to be able to, to, to help you center yourself to, to make sure that you're making a good decision at that moment. Yes. I love that. Um, and that's, this is so funny. We talk about courage. There's, um, I'll share a little thing on here. Uh, this morning. Something came, I was listening to my, you know, positive story or something or other, and something came up for me, and I went, "Oh, oh, I think that's a big perception shift for me." And I and I knew that I I should go and sit with myself and just walk through it. But I don't know that whether I didn't just didn't have the courage to do it, or I was, you know, I was like, "Oh, I'm not gonna have enough time," and I got distracted. But I was gonna. This is what I wanted to share is that we we can get distracted from visiting with ourselves. Sure. We get, we get busy uh, and we get distracted because we don't want to deal with whatever is in front of us right now. So so we think I I have to vacuum my house right now. (laughs) Sometimes it's just, you know what? It doesn't take a half an hour. It could take 30 seconds just sitting with yourself, kind of trying to align yourself, maybe do some breathing exercises or whatever your thing is. Um, and uh, just just sit in silence for just a minute. Listen to what your body is telling you. Listen to what your mind is telling you, and then go from there. I love that. You know, it's funny as I um, I'll say, oh, I you know, I, I am that crazy cat lady, but I love it. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I have to walk the cat now. And I'm like, I, do I? I'm like, right now? Like, I shouldn't just sit down and just ask myself this question. It'll take me five minutes to write some notes. But I was like, no, I the cat. I have to walk. And like, no, I did not have to walk the cat that moment. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm shiny, shiny, shiny. Yeah, right. Yeah, Yeah. and cats are very shiny. That's my good distraction. But I, I love it. You write this. You wrote, "Visit your pity party. Don't just live there." Ah, I love that so much. 
<laughs> yeah, sometimes sometimes that's all you need to do. Um, you know, stay there for a few minutes if you want, but you have to get yourself right back out of it again. Yes, and how is that yep. done? Is that with mind or how? Yeah. Sometimes you just have to force yourself out of it. Um, really, it's a matter of, you know, if you want to cry and fall to your knees, that's fine. Uh, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and just continue on continue on with life. And it's be- if it's because you made a, uh, a wrong choice, um, make a different one next time. Yeah. We got lots of yeah. lots of time to make choices, don't we? Goodness. <laughs> um, something fun that I love, love, love is that you use travel as back in the day, you know, you to, to allow yourself to open up to another world, to other possibilities, just to new experiences. Is that one of your biggest ways of, of kind of opening up your world? Yeah, I think travel is super important. Um, and I think it's important for kids as well Mm. Uh, when you see we are you know as Canadians incredibly fortunate um to be to be where we are uh and you know and live where we live when you go see other countries about how other people you know live live their lives I think it makes you and it hopefully (laughs) makes you incredibly grateful for where you're at and perceptions do change you know, maybe maybe it's not maybe it's not so bad. I'm not living like this. I'm living like this. So maybe maybe things aren't as bad as what I am making them out to be. Yes, I have to tell you, I when I back in 2007, I went to Japan, and um, oh my, I have never been so grateful for air conditioning and non-humid air in my life. Oh my God, <laughs> I was just constantly damp and wet and grubby. Oh, <laughs> so, and I I mean the beauty around me, but I love that you wrote. Um, Travel and experience the world, even if it's just the world around you. We often forget that, like, two doors down, somebody may be, that's traveling. You're doing, like, go to a different restaurant, go to a different store, drive to the, maybe it's the same chain store, but go to a different one, a different location. Okay. It's, it's, it's so attainable to, to just shift. That's right. That's right. And, you know, get out into nature. Um, yeah. If you're used to being in the city, maybe you know, too often in the, in the big concrete jungle, just go find a park somewhere, reconnect, reconnect with nature, just tends to make you feel better. Yeah. And you can do that. Yeah. It is. And something else I just love, love, love that you wrote, you said, um, don't forget to do the do. Wishing will not get you there. I mean, it's a step, but it's certainly, you got to do the do. That's right. You can learn all the things you want, but unless you put them into practice, they're not going to work. Yeah. Oh, we got to do that, do. <laughs> but, but you actually do help people get to a place in their lives where they want to do the do. I think that's the thing. The desire has to be there. and That's, that's right. You know, if, if you're going to um, coach someone, um, they they need to be willing to do it because you're not going to be hand-holding them uh, the entire way through, nor, nor are you going to be doing the work for them. Um, if they want to see the change, then they're going to have to do the work for sure. Yes. And okay, so this is a big one because um, I, whether they're my friends or some clients, you know, whoever shows up in my life, we, we can do that talking, we can do that coaching, um, whether it's on, on food or attitude or losing weight, exercise. It, they, and they have really honestly and been said, said I, I know I should, I want the result. I can't get the physical part of my body to catch up with the doing. Is there some tips you have for somebody to shift to the doing? Just start small. I mean, if, if your goal is to run a half an hour on a treadmill somewhere, which mine is not, um, <laughs> I, I, I will walk for hours. <laughs> but unless somebody's facing me, I don't run. Um, you know what? Just, just, smart, just start small. Maybe it's going up and down the stairs a couple of times or around the block. Right? Yeah. The, more, the more you do it, the easier it's going to get to go. You know, next time you go out there, say, okay, well, maybe it's going to be two blocks this time. And then three blocks and then four blocks. But just start something small. Don't look at, um, you know, one month from now where you want to be. What do you, what do you want to do today? Yeah. Right? What's, your goal, what's your goal for this hour um, mm-hmm. today versus what's your goal for 30 days from now? Just look at the present and work your way towards that. Right? It, I, it's, it's, it is good to have that long-term goal, but you do need the short-term one as yes. a step, baby steps to help you get there. 
I love that you said that. Oh, okay, that was huge. That was my little breakthrough. Thank you. Uh, because you, you hear it start small. You hear that. But what you said was, what do you want to do today? So I, I struggle with water. And it's not just water. It's any liquid. I just I have a small stomach. And it actually hurts if I drink too much. But I know I need to, to drink to consume to flush. And that's my goal. So literally every day, I say, just get four cups. Just get four cups of water and, you can, and spread it out. Because then I don't have to think, okay, in a month, I want to be drinking two liters of water. Because it freaks me out. <laughs> <laughs> just have it on your counter and just watch it go down throughout the day. Yes. A visual reminder, right, of, of, of how much that you have accomplished and what yes. you have yet to accomplish. Yes, and I literally, it's funny, I don't choose like a water bottle. I actually use a, an old school measuring cup, like the ones my mom had when we were little for, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like, go to it. Those are little fun things. And I love that you just brought up celebration. You do celebrate those little successes. Yep. And, and, and you really need to. It helps just to keep you motivated uh, to continue going. Yes. Celebration. Mm-hmm. You're right. Celebration keeps mm-hmm. you motivated. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, why are you doing it, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, so do you invite, with the book, your chapter's been out now, too. We are stuck this since May. The book has come out. Um, mm-hmm. How has this chapter been? Has it been supporting your, your career and your, your pathway of decisions and choices? It has been, um, you know, I still have a, I, I, I did write this. Um, I do have a career um, myself and being able to go through this process has actually made me better at what I do um, in, oh. in my profession, in, in my profession, sorry. Um, I have a, a team that I lead and they are amazing people. And my job really is to uh, empower them to do the best job that they can do. Um, and going through this process has actually been a really good catalyst for that. It's just helped me progress even further from where I was at before. Oh, see, that is such a good um, thing to let people know that sharing a story or trying to, was was writing the chapter for you um, not difficult in in trying to figure out what steps you wanted to share with people or like what was the the growth for you? It wasn't actually difficult to write the story for my story and I know it very well. It was difficult to share it. Um, However, it was that judgment piece, you know, what are my family and friends going to think? Um, you know, what if somebody reads it? And then what if nobody reads it, right? So there's, you know, yeah. there's some fears that actually come along with that. Uh, but once I had, and again, this is something that I had to work myself through um, as well. And journaling was a really good exercise for this one. And, you know, once I actually shared it, once it just became easier and easier uh you know, definitely easier. So it's, it's, it's been an, an amazing uh, experience for me. And, mm. and I'm really grateful and thankful to, to Heather for actually um, introducing you to this. <laughs> really. yeah. Yeah. I, I love that you said that, you know, you're so right about the fears. Like some people might have a dream and they'll think, oh, I'm afraid to dream it because what if, what if it doesn't come true? And then the other thing is, sometimes there's fears. What if it does come true? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, what if, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have that, that one fear to say, well, what if somebody reads it or nobody likes it? And then the next, on, on the other hand, is, what if somebody actually does read it? <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, and then I guess I'm putting myself out there and being vulnerable, but, um, you know, sharing a story helps people connect with you. Yeah. Um, and and with and with your audience, so it, it was definitely a good experience. Uh, it was easy to write, but it was difficult to share. But then I had to work myself through that. I love that you did that. And everybody, if you would like to connect with Leslie Tremblay, it's L E S L I E, and Tremblay is T R E M B L A Y. And I do want to invite everybody to check out. First of all, pick up your copy of Obstacles Equal Opportunities, Volume Two, and connect with both of our guests from today. So Tracy Rickards or Leslie Tremblay. And first of all, thank you so much for being on the show a second time. We love having you here. <laughs> Thanks very much, Lisa. It's been great. Oh, it really has. Thank you so much. And everybody, this is these are two incredible authors, co-authors, who have just really expressed that, you know what, obstacles do come up, but you can make them into opportunities. I love that so much. So again, thank you so much, everybody. This is Leslie Tremblay. We've had a lovely half hour with you guys. Thank you very much. Ah, okay, everybody. 
That concludes the um, Obstacles Equal Opportunities Volume 2 series. We've been able to dive a little deeper. And please share with me on my Facebook page, Lisa Berry, what obstacles that you might have come up to or need to get through. And then I know that all the co-authors would love to chime in and give you a little help and guidance on how you can turn them into opportunities. So thank you, everybody. We'll catch you next week on Light on Living. I've been your host, Lisa Berry.